Hi all, it's Stu, AG6AG, and I got a hankering to do some contesting this weekend. So I thought I'd take you along for the ride, show you how I set up, and show you how I get it done. Now, you'd think that the first thing I'd be looking at was the antennas or the radio or stuff like that, but it really isn't. The first thing I look at is the contest rules, because after all, if the contest rules don't work for me for that contest, uh, it's not going to work, period. So with that, let's take a look at the contest rules. So when I go to find a contest, typically I go to contestcalendar.com. And if I'm looking for the most recent contest, the closest contest to me, I'll hit the eight day and look on down at the graph here and see what I've got for contests. This weekend is a special weekend because we've got four QSO parties that are going to allow us to submit a single log to all four and not have to worry about changing logs or moving stuff around or figuring out what QSO belongs to what QSO party. We just put it all in one big log and we send it on into all of them and uh, they just parse out what's theirs. So... The seven, excuse me, you know, I got seven on the mind. The four QSO contests that are available is the seventh call area QSO party, the Indiana QSO party, the Delaware QSO party, and the New England QSO party. So I've read, believe it or not, the rules on all four of these to make sure all four I can get a combination of operating perimeters that I'm going to do in the contest that work with all four contests. Uh, so let's just take a look at the seventh call area QSO party. And basically here's the general description of it, but I want to, you know, I've looked at this. I want to really look at the rules. So I'm going to go down to the link under find rules at and end up at the seven QP, the seventh call area QSO party site. Their front page here lists that they've made some changes and changed the behavior of how they're going to deal with things due to the COVID-19 guidelines. Boy, we've all lived with that with this field day, I'll tell you. Uh, but what I really want to dig into are the actual rules that are going to affect me during the contest. So there they are. Now, the top half is important. It's kind of the synopsis. The contest starts at 1300 UTC Saturday to 700 UTC on Sunday. And uh, I'm on the West Coast, so that would be 6 a.m. to midnight Saturday. Uh, and boy, there's a neat little short contest. It'd be fun to do. Um, it just talks that uh, how it works, that the seven uh, call area stations work everyone and others work the seven call area stations. Uh, and that's pretty much standard for a QSO party. Entry categories, these are important. Single op, single op assisted, multi-single, multi-multi, seventh area uh, county expedition, mobile, I mean... It's pretty easy for me to turn around and pick what I want to do. I'm going to run single op assisted because I like running assisted uh, with a uh, spotting network. You know, if you don't want to, if you want to run single op, that's great too. I also need to decide if I want to do low power, high power, or QRP. Um, anything that is under 150 watts but over 5 watts, okay, or 5 watts or greater theoretically, is low power. Uh, so I'll probably run low power this uh, this uh, particular contest. However, you know, if I'm not making any QSOs, I may switch to high power. I'm allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to go back down, right? So just remember that. Um, awards, I don't really care about awards. I'm really not into this to win. Uh, I'm into it because I enjoy doing the contest. Uh, I get to talk to a lot of people and I get to fill a log and that's fun for me. Um, the exchange, this is very important because I got to make sure that I get the right information and of course that I give the right information to whoever I'm having the QSO with. So basically it just uh, tells me that if it's a seventh area station, it's going to send me 
my signal report and a five letter, letter state county code. Um, example is uh, ORDES would be Oregon and I'm not exactly sure what the DES is. Um, but I'm going to print a list of all those out so I have them next to me so I can make a determination if someone isn't giving me the code, if they're actually just giving me the county. Um, anyway, um, they have things like county line multipliers. So if I hear uh, two separate codes, okay, this guy is right on the border of Utah and Idaho, I would uh, actually know how to deal with that. That would be how I would enter it. It would be U-T-R-I-C slash I-D-B-E-A. If the state code's the same, it looks like they can abbreviate it with O-R-D-E-S slash J-E-F. Uh, so I know what I'm listening for then. I'm not going, uh, you know, uh, hearing these exchanges and not understanding them. It's important because I'm going to be talking to people that may be very serious about doing this contest, Right. So it's my job to make sure that I know enough when I before I even key the mic to know what I'm supposed to hear back and, of course, what I'm supposed to give. And what that basically is is for non-seventh area stations, send signal report plus state, providence, or DX. That means in my case, I would send 5-9 uh, California or 5-9 Charlie Alpha and... Their goal, of course, is to talk to all 13 uh, uh, provinces, and also uh, there's 13 provinces for uh, Canada and all that that these guys are looking for. So my goal is to talk to all of their counties and states that are associated with the seventh call area. Their goal is to talk to all the states as well as all those states and counties that are in the contest. And that's how they get multipliers. That's how I get multipliers to make my score higher. I want to look at the bands because I want to make sure that I'm on the right band when I'm uh, in the contest. Sometimes they'll say, oh, no, you're not going to work on this band. Or they're going to say, oh, you can work on this band. This is pretty standard. All the standard bands, less the works band, uh, works bands, Got to get the S in there. Uh, and 60 meters. I would expect that. And, of course, 30 meters isn't there either, the digital only. Uh, this is even actually giving suggested frequencies. So that's kind of cool. I can actually print this and uh, go looking for people within these frequency ranges that they're listing. The scoring, well, two points for single sideband. Uh, three points for CW and four points for digital. So, you know, gosh, maybe I want to do some digital in this. I was just going to do phone, but I could really bring my points up with digital. Let's, uh, let's just keep going here on that. County line contacts count as multiple uh, QSOs for both stations. That means that if I put in one of those really crazy things, I'll, I'll get uh, two, uh, two separate um, uh, multipliers, which is really cool. Let's see, anything else that I need to know about? Uh, so the non-7th area stations multiply total QSO points by 7th area uh, counties worked, and there are theoretically a total of 259 of them. Wow. Boy, that's like 259 QSOs if you don't talk to anyone in the same county at all. That's insane. Anyway, important note here is the logs must be received by May 13th. Uh, so it tells us where to send the logs right there. It's an email address. Uh, I need to include uh, the station call sign in the subject. All right. Cabrillo is referred uh, or Cabrillo. Uh, Cabrillo, I never can pronounce that right. Uh, let's see, uh, web form is available for online Cabrillo log file generation and submission. Okay, the rest of this looks pretty straightforward. Other, all equipment and antennas must be within a thousand foot diameter. Boy, that sounds familiar, huh? Help on website. Oh, look at this. Okay, there's uh, help on the website here. Just uh, give me more information like maps and stuff like that. So, all right, I understand. 
I know what my exchange is. I know what I'm supposed to be receiving. Now I need to take a look at, uh, basically, uh, I'm going to need to take a look at the state and county list. There it is. Woohoo! look at that. Now, let's see. And lucky me, look up here. Here is a printable PDF version. I'm going to print that out so I have it next to me during the contest. Anyway, so I take you along for the ride to look at the other three rule sets, but we'd be burning a lot of time, and I think I got my point across. So next time, I'm going to go ahead and set up my logging software to work for this contest. So as the old saying goes, woohoo, off to the races.